All right. So um, if you do not mind, which I really, really, truly hope you don't, I am recording this with purposes of making this an audio interview. Sure. All right. Fantastic. Perfect. Um, I've been told that uh, my fans enjoy listening to my voice, so I've been trying to kind of steer the interviews and audio as much as I possibly can. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but we're here. We're here to talk about you. <laughs> and, you, you know, my first question, which is I <laughs> could almost piggyback what you just said, uh, is, you know, in regards to like recent photos and stuff that I've seen from you of uh, events and things that you've been doing recently. I must say, my dear, you are looking pretty fabulous uh, right now. Are you a uh, like an avid health nut, or did you just kind of run across some unknown fountain of youth that everybody needs to find? What's going on here? Because I know Los Angeles water is not that good. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. No, I'm an avid health nut. I work out a lot, and I'm a vegetarian and stuff like that, and I'm just really into, um, I don't know, just taking good care of myself. Okay. Good, good, good. Me as well. So I, I totally, totally uh, agree with you on that one. Now, we'll ask you this, too, um, kind of stemming from your fitness um, and being a vegetarian. Uh, do you ever feel like um, it, it kind of helps with your with your workout and your recovery from your from your fitness endeavors with you being, you know, a vegetarian as opposed to like a carnivore <laughs> that's constantly trying to fill himself with protein? I really don't have any idea, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I do. I do work really hard on getting enough protein so that, you know, so my muscles can repair and I can get back out there and stuff like that. But um, I mostly eat, um, eat for me, like I eat like, a, like, like I put gas in the tank. Like, like I'll sit down and I'll eat and then as soon as I'm full, I'll stop. Gotcha. And, um, I, eat, I eat healthy and I take vitamins when I feel like I need something. You know, I kind of listen to my body. We're very in tune with each other. That's good. And. Yeah, so I, I love to work out. I love to, I lift heavy. Yoga, too, possibly? Pardon? Do you do any yoga or anything like that? No. Okay. So, <laughs> so strictly strictly lifting, huh? Strictly lifting, and I love, I love boxing. I love fighting and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so anything that's very, very physical. You know, I, I, like, I like to kind of exercise the all right awesome i'm so excited to hear that because i love when i'm interviewing somebody and it kind of steers the direction a little bit different from where i was going because it intrigues me on certain things that you say and and i hearing you mention that you are a fan of fighting so i would love to ask you as a person who also covers women's mixed martial arts are you a fan of the ladies in the cage Fantastic, but what I do is I box. I love boxing. My dad taught us to box when we were kids. So oh, we really? Bag and, yeah, that's kind of my thing. I love kicking and hitting. Uh, it's very, very aggressive. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. So how yeah. d how did you originally get um, set up with and involved with Dawn of the Crescent Moon? Well, the um, producer and director are actually friends of mine. And they knew I had a really busy schedule, and um, they said, but we have this script that we're, we're getting ready to produce, and, and we just take a look at it, you know, because like, I told them, I think I had eight scripts I had to read at the time. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll take a, <laughs> I know, it's crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'll take a look at it, right? Because mm -hmm. I kind of owe them, like, you know how you do favors back and right. forth in this industry. Kevin Coleman, the, the um, producer, had, had rewritten a script for me once before that I, that I produced, and I kind of felt like, okay, I'll, I'll read this. So he goes, well, just look while you're reading it, you know, give me some feedback on it, and while you're at it, you know, just take a look and see if there's any roles in there you might be interested in. And, of course, there's a role in there, and they named it Tracy, and it was spelled the same way as mine, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm stuck. Like, I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, um, but, but luckily, I really liked the script, and I really liked the people that they cast in it and stuff like that, and it was an absolute blast. But it was, it was one of those things where I knew the people, and, I mean, lots of people send me things where I know the people, and I don't feel like I have to do it at that point, you know, there's no way out when they name her after you, and she's, I mean, she's exactly me, and I can't right. get anything that's me. Yeah, so. Okay, so the, so in a sense, you kind of felt as if the role was written for you, having your name oh, and all that stuff? It was absolutely written for me. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I kind of figured that out later. I mean, Kevin's a very bright guy, so, uh -huh. you know, and, and he's not beyond manipulation, so that was his... That was his tactic, and I thought, it was, I thought it was pretty smooth. I thought it was pretty fun. But, you know, we did get best um, ensemble cast at the AOS Festival where we premiered. So okay. I, I, I honestly put 
together a, a nice group there. Okay. And we all worked really well off of each other. So. Awesome, awesome. So with someone like you who's been, you know, who's worn many hats in the industry from acting to directing, writing, producing, um, you're also a mother. Uh, when you're signing on for a project like this where, you know, you're not the main focus in the film, but you do have your, you know, your little small bit parts and things like that, uh, is especially with the person like producers being your friends, were you ever like, are you ever consulted on anything like on the direction a certain scene should take? Do you, are you able, are you allowed to give that type of input with your uh, expertise or are you just like, I'm an actress today. That's what I'm doing. And that's it. I always give input and I, I always make sure first of all that, it, that, that they're open to it. But most people that I work with are, are very, they're very eager to hear what I have to say and to, and to, you know, to hear feedback from me and things like that. And of course, I also, even if there's continuity people and script people there, I, I always throw my two cents in, you know, hey, that, okay. that little, you know, roll of tape wasn't in the background in the last shot, you really need to move that. You know, I mean, <laughs> once once you've done stuff like that, then then you can't compromise your values. You know, you right. have to be, you're very, you get very consistent in things, and people appreciate it. I haven't had anybody have a problem with it in the past. They won't usually let me lift heavy things, even though I'm strong. I usually be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Union You're like, no, no, I got this, okay? I got this. Like. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, I like being part of the production. I, I love being an actress. I mean, that's my number one thing. But, but at the same time, I always feel like it's such a team effort. You know, I mean, if you're on a bigger budget, not so much. But on some of these smaller budgets, they, they go out of their way to pay you well. Right. In addition to the fact that they don't have a lot of money. Right. So you kind of feel like if you have something to offer, you know, you bring it to the table. Like, I helped with some of the casting decisions on those two towards the end. They're like, ah, oh, nice. between these people. Yeah, so I'll say, let me take a look at them. I'll send me over the tape and stuff like that. I mean, just because, you know, they value my opinion, and, and we all want it to be the best project they can make. Awesome, yeah. awesome. That's good to know. So you were approached, and you, you said you read the script, and you really, really liked the script before even, um, and then, you know, the part was rewritten and things like that. What was one thing, though, overall about the project that surprised you whenever you signed on to go ahead and, and play the role as Tracy? Um, surprised me is an interesting one. I mean, it did take a couple of twists. Like, I heard um, when I was taking it on, I cared who played, you know, who else was in the film, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I was I was very surprised when Barry Corbett came on. I was actually thrilled because I've always wanted to to, um, to meet him, and now we're very, very good friends. He's so, awesome. So, oh, he's, he's amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, and um, he was actually here last Friday night because we held a birthday party at my house. Oh, great. So it, my daughter and stuff. Yeah, but so I, I, w I was impressed with the budget, what they were able to put into the talent, mm -hmm. how they were able to get some really good names. But then again, it's because they, they kept so much of the budget for the talent, and then they, you know, brought us all out to this little tiny small town, and um, and so I think that everything was more affordable there. I think they did a fabulous job at, at putting it together for what they did. And um, okay. I was I was very surprised. The other thing I was very surprised by is, is we shot at this place called called Joe's Place, and okay. Joe Simpson um, runs it. And this guy stayed up every night, even after closing hours, and just fed us. <laughs> and this is the I mean, bar, the bar that you were in when there's the stories being told to you. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. that's awesome. I know, and gave us you know drinks and food and just like even everything was shut down. He'd kick it back up at two, three in the morning. I mean, so the hospitality, the small town hospitality, was just really amazing and really spectacular and very fun to do. Awesome, awesome. So you, if someone was to pull up your IMD page, uh, IMDb page, I mean, obviously they would see that you've been involved in things from television to features to even short films and features. Uh, with being so busy and being involved with so many projects and stuff, do would you consider yourself a child of the industry? Oh, definitely. I, I, I did my first project. I did my first commercial. I was 15. I did some kids soda, and I've done... You know, I mean, I don't know, probably close to 80 commercials now, and and um, I've never I've never worked outside the industry mm -hmm. since I was a teenager. So you know, so I wasn't a small child in the industry. So I did theater when I was young, and I did dance shows when I was young. So I've I've always been on stage and in theater, and then into television and, and film. It's just it's it's kind of it's not all that I know, but it's. It's, it's my life. Now, know? was this also, like, during your college years and stuff like that? Were you still, like, you know, performing in theaters and, and making films and, and being on television and commercials? I was. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. When I was 15, yeah. So I just kind of always did it after that. And I did a lot of print work. I still do a lot of print work. Right, right. And um, 
so you know, I consider that all to be within the same industry. And for sure. And people are like, well, how do, you, how do you pick? You know, what do you do? To, and really what it is is you see what your best opportunities are at the moment. Okay. And sometimes you crave, sometimes you crave something and you're like, oh, I really need to do TV or, oh, I really need to do print work or, oh, I really need to, you know, I need a great indie or I need a better, I mean, so you always, you always have something that you kind of have an itch for. Okay. Know? I'm really compelled by what you just said there. So are you saying that it's, in a sense, better for someone to more look at the opportunities that present itself than to just be, like, stuck on one particular thing, like, I'm only going to do movies or I'm only going to do television? You know, I think that everybody has to do it their own way. It's just like when I started out doing commercials as a young teenager, you know, commercials weren't cool. You know, <laughs> involved in that also at times? You know, I think luck and karma, they're all, they're all tied in together with, I think they're all tied in with what kind of effort you put out. For sure. But I yep. don't know how, how much luck there really is in the world, because yep. uh, I, I kind of think that I've worked really, really, really hard for everything I've done. Yeah, I totally agree with that statement. I always feel that you're not able to get luck or anything like that without putting in that effort first, so I totally agree with you yeah. on that. So, my next question would be, in regards to the film... Um, what about Dawn of the Crescent Moon do you think will appeal to us horror fans? What I love about Dawn of the Crescent Moon and what, and what, what is coming out with some of the critic reviews and stuff too is it is it's like one of the old it's like one of the old horror films. So mm -hmm. it isn't all CGI and this that and the other thing, but it's really scares the living daylights out of you. So so it's like it's kind of the old campfire right. spooky people dying, you know. It's you know, blood and gore, you know, people disappearing under the lake mm -hmm. kind of violently. I mean so it kind of appeals to that old fashioned, you know, by the coin of the instant cult class, it kind of appeals to that to that 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 horror film genre that we all grew up with and that we love. And um, I think that's what really sets it apart. Okay. Okay. So how was it working with director uh, Kurt London and, and your segment that you guys did in the bar? I know you explained it a little bit with the uh, owner of the bar and, and how he had it set up for you guys, but was that film separately from everyone else or was that all in the same time frame where maybe they would shoot outside and then do your guys' parts on the inside? Well, they were trying to um, wrap me and Barry out, out first. So we shot our stuff straight in the bar. I mean, okay. And, and it, it, it was it was actually really easy because they put us up in the bed and breakfast across the street. Oh, we nice! There for that week, and yeah, we just walk across the street and go sh and go shoot our stuff. And of course, you know, everybody that that I was working with were such professionals that it was just super, super smooth and easy shooting, and and um, just really easy stuff. Yeah, so it was really nice. Okay, okay, and then. Let's see. It looks like you have um, a few more projects on the horizon. Is there anything that you would like to uh, talk about that you're extremely pumped up for and you can't wait for people to get their eyes and ears on this? Well, I think that this, this project that I'm working on in November um, with Neil Johnson, we're, we're getting ready to, to produce this project called Descent. And it's really, really exciting. It's science fiction and it's time travel and it's all those things. But okay. the most of all, the script is just fantastic and the characters are rich and deep. And, and I'm really excited to play that. And then in February and March, I have a comedy backed up with an action film, but I can't announce the names yet. Okay. So I have three of these distinctly different characters that I'm playing in these next three films. And they're all, they're all lead roles, they're all fantastic roles. And I'm super, super, super excited about the coming year. Oh, that's great. We can't wait to see them. That's awesome. So let me ask you this. As a person who's been around the industry as long as you have, as we have mentioned earlier, tell me what you feel about kind of like new sparked revolution of women behind the cameras, the women who are actually, you know, the movers and shakers now. They're not just the eye candy on the screen. They're making the decisions in the office to being behind the camera, to producing and writing more and stuff like that. How does that feel? How does that make you feel? Does it make you feel proud as an industry professional who's been around and been able to do so many different things? Well, I think that, you know, we're all human beings. And my dad 
always raised me, said, you know, Tracy, there's nothing you can do. I mean, so I never grew up aware of gender inequality. I, I, it wasn't part of my, of my upbringing or part of my world. So as I got older, I realized that that went on, but it never really affected my life. And um, so I've always made decisions and started companies and built things and, you know, bought my own boats. And I, I always kind of just lived like a human being, like a successful human being. But um, the fact that, that not all women had that opportunity wasn't really in my eyes until I got a little bit older. Okay. The fact that it's becoming more fair to women out there is, is fantastic. I mean, because women have always been behind, um, you know, I've always hidden behind men from what I've found out as I've gotten older, which which isn't right. I mean, we're all, we're all individuals. We all have, you know, different levels of, of intelligence and capability, and I don't think that, that gender ought to separate us at all. That's kind of like race separating us. There's, there's no sure. reason that. So, um, that's all such a hogwash in my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we're all humans. We all have our strong points and we should do those things that we're good at. Okay. And I personally love producing. I'm very, very good at it. I'm very good at, at you know, making decisions and, and you know, the all-encompassing knowledge that comes behind it and being able to move forward easily and stuff like that. So, so what you're saying is you like telling people what to do. <laughs> only if I know, only if I know what should be done. You know what I mean? I'm oh, very, for sure. I'm very good at stepping back when I don't know the right decision to. Okay. And sometimes I think it throws people because I'll be like, I don't know. What do you think? You know, they'll look at me like, what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> so I think we need to know our strong points and our and our not so strong points, and we need to do what we're best at. Okay. Well, Tracy, I have one more question for you. And once again, I really, really appreciate this. This has been fantastic itself in regards to this. So I'm glad we were able to get together and do this. Um, m my last question, uh, and you know, you can answer this any way you feel, please. But what is, what's a question of advice that you're usually asked about in regards to your durability in the industry? Like what's something that people ask you? Like how, how are you able to stay in this so long? Like, because I, I, I don't go on a lot of auditions. I get a lot of scripts sent to me. Right. And um, and people say to me, well, what do you do different that make you know, and I don't take everything, but they're like, what do you do different that makes you do book things when I go on auditions? Because when I do have auditions, I have a really high booking rate. And what I do different is I prepare for my auditions when I do have them exactly like I'm preparing for a shoot. Okay. If I don't have time to do that, I won't go. Right. And because I think that people always remember your worst performance. So why do people go in there day after day after day and they get rejected because they're constantly showing a, a less than average performance because they're like, oh, you don't have to be off book or oh, you don't have to, you know, we're just being your type and stuff like that. Well, that's not true. They want to see somebody come in there that that that's what, what they're looking to hire. And so I think that's what I do differently is, you know, first of all, I work out all the time. I try to keep myself physically and everything else mentally as, as sharp as I can. And then when I go in, I do my best work. And um, that's recognized. And then and then people start just sending over a script or something like that because they, you know, even if I don't book something, they, they know that they want to work with me. And I think that that's really important to always show people your best. Okay. All right. Well, you just showed your best and did an amazing job with this interview. So I really, really appreciate it so much, Tracy. Well, thank you. You're very, yeah, very well. Talking to you. Yeah, you as well. And I look forward to talking to you again here in the future because I'll be tracking down these films that you're talking about. So we will do this again. <laughs> okay.